Hi, Paul Gardner, Stephen here. We're just at the uh, the wrap up of the Shuttleworth Foundation uh, gathering here, and uh, we've just been demonstrating a feature to the team here that uh, we're going to show you now. So uh, we'll have a, a look here at, uh, at Kabir's screen. So we've got a, an SMS ready to send using the Serval Mesh MS uh, platform. So Kabir can now uh, hit send. There we go. Yep. Send. And that will think for a little while because uh, it will try to deliver the message directly in the first instance. And so it'll try that for a little while and uh, it will soon give up trying to send it directly and realize that it needs to use this, uh, this store and port capacity. Okay, so that's done that. So we'll just, what we can see here is uh, some debug output kind of showing um, the ID of, uh, of Kabir's phone. And uh, that's kind of the, uh, the message set that his phone is currently trying to send. And so what should hopefully happen fairly soon is in fact that that message will get uh, updated onto my phone, uh, which will hopefully happen in the next few seconds. And once that's happened, I mean, and this will happen in the background, so we actually, in the, the production software, we actually don't need to do this bucking about, it automatically ends up uh, getting onto the, uh, to the other phone. And then what we'll do is that I'll actually start walking back up the hill once that's happened. And then once we get to uh, to Arthur, his phone will automatically receive the message from mine. So, in fact, uh, let's start walking up now. I think that's, uh, that's uh, hopped on. So uh, let's go up. I think he's trying to send you a message. Oh yeah. So uh, hopefully the system should have uh, automatically put onto my phone, and uh, hopefully now you wake your phone up, the, uh, the message should come through. Let's have a look. Sure. So there's a message I received before. Uh, yeah. I'm just waiting to see whether the new message arrives. Sure. It may even have arrived while we were uh, waiting to come in. Let's actually see what we've got here. So we've got. Oh, there's a new message. Yes, indeed. That was. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> That's not. It's. Ah, we wanted. Crazy phones. Really, what we've been demonstrating here is a little contrived, of course, but we've actually managed to send an SMS from one person where there's no coverage and actually no mesh connection directly through to the recipient. And by me simply carrying a phone through without me having to do anything really to, uh, to relay the message into the final version, and of course, you won't have to do anything at all. It will simply hop onto the phone and hop off at the right place. And then the message comes through. So, you know, this could be, you know, between villages in remote locations. It could be, you know, people in a disaster or emergency situation, feature of the system. And uh, in fact, what we might even do now, um, I might send a message to, uh, to one of the team uh, back home in Australia. Because of course, we're here at uh, Macaulaysburg in the north of South Africa at the moment. And so we'll, uh, we'll hit the send button on this. And of course, uh, that phone isn't in range at the moment because uh, it's 11,000 kilometers away. And once the phone has decided to, uh, to do the store and forward, uh, that will find its way onto the other phones that we have here that are coming back to Australia with us. And uh, hopefully, um, in a, a moment in the video, you'll actually see uh, what's happened once you get back to Australia and see the reception of that message over 11,000 kilometres between two continents, crossing an ocean and several days of time and absolutely no infrastructure. So if we are successful in that, then we're confident that we can provide uh, a very useful communication service in many rural and remote settings. Um, so uh, I hope you see that right now. Okay, so uh, here we are back in Australia and uh, I've got a phone which is carrying the SMS message that we, uh, we sent from in uh, Macaulaysburg. And in theory, once I turn this phone onto the mesh, uh, so that it joins the mesh, Alastair's phone here should actually receive the message that was sent some 10,000 kilometers away and several days ago. So my phone is uh, joining the mesh. And uh, Rhizome checks periodically every uh, few seconds for new content. So hopefully that will uh, do its thing and we'll get a notification about a new message coming through. 
I heard a noise that sounded like an SMS being received. Um, if you can uh, if you pull down the, uh, the top, uh, the swipey thing at the top, very top. Yep. And that's digital telegram. Yes, a digital telegram. Do I see a messaging droid? Uh, let's go SMS droid. Right. Sure. Just for good luck. Just for good luck. Oh, look. And what does it say? It says, uh, greetings from South Africa. Excellent. Excellent. So, uh, not sure whether we'll be able to quite see that on the camera. I can see the camera as a reflection on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go. It works. Try okay, this. yes. So, we have purposely this time sent a, uh, an SMS message some 10,000 kilometres in several days simply using cheap Android phones. It's the only infrastructure involved in that process, using the several rhizome store and forward um, mesh MS uh, delivery method. So this is fantastic. And when you think about what this can do, I mean, it's slightly daft for international air travelers to carry SMS messages around. But if you have someone walking between villages, you have people in remote areas, um, you know, there's a whole variety of situations where this technology will really be uh, exceptionally useful. So that's the latest in new features from the Serval project. Thank you very much. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked first time. <laughs> <laughs> I should have kept it on yeah, the right. turnaround. <laughs> it seriously worked first time. <laughs> like, this is